Good afternoon. The first item of business is a member's business debate on motion 5761 in the name of Christina McKelvey on Motor Neuron Disease Global Awareness Day. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Would those members who wish to speak in the debate please press the request to speak buttons now. And I call on Christina McKelvey to open the debate. Seven minutes are there about, please, Ms McKelvey. Thank you. Thank you very much, President Officer. And before I kick off into the substance of my debate, can I uh, make a grateful thanks to all the members across the Chamber who took time to sign the motion uh, to bring it to Chamber today. Um, I'm sure you'll have my grateful thanks, but I'm sure you'll have the community who support and uh, look after people with motor neuron disease. Grateful thanks too. So, presiding officers, as I rise today to mark Motor Neuron Disease Global Awareness Day and as part of the Motor Neuron Disease Global Awareness Week, may I thank all the members who have come along today in the Chamber to show their support and to con their continued support to, to help uh, the motor neuron disease uh, community and also to fight to find a cure. Um, can I also warmly invite members to the parliamentary reception I'm hosting in the garden lobby later this evening at six o'clock and we can hear directly from Motor Neuron Disease Scotland and uh, their patrons and uh, uh, people that they support there as well. Presiding officer, as, as you know, motor neuron disease is indiscriminate. It knows no borders, no class, no race, no gender. It doesn't discriminate based on income or status, nor does it hold judgment on rich or poor. It's unrelenting, it's terminal, and it's cruel. But as events of the past few weeks have shown in Grenfell and in Finsbury, in the face of cruelty, we find community. And Global Awareness Day is that community, a specific day that binds people together, a day where we all stand united in awareness of motor neuron disease, and of course, we stand united in search of a cure. This Awareness Day does exactly what it sets out to do, get people talking about MND, to spread the, the awareness of the issue, to campaign and to raise money. That money is vital, as it always is. It's precisely why the Scottish Government have listened to Motor Neuron Disease Scotland and why we listened to the late Gordon Aikman, a friend to many in this chamber. Presiding officer, the Scottish Government pledged to invest more into research for motor neuron disease, and as far as I can see, they're beginning to deliver that. The Scottish Government pledged to double the amount of motor neuron disease nurses, and we now seem to be in a position where that's being delivered to. And the Scottish Government pledged to give motor neuron disease patients a voice. And through the inspirational work of Professor Shandran and his inspiring team, who I've met many times at the Ewan MacDonald Research Centre, that they are delivering to give motor neuron disease patients that literal voice as well as a holistic care approach. But we won't stop there because we can't stop there. The work of MND Scotland will guide this government into further action and I know that they are pretty insistent in doing that, as does many of us in the chamber and I commend them for it. Presiding officer, as you know I have a long relationship with Motor Neuron Disease Scotland. The support, their advice and their advocacy, not only for me, but the 450 people in Scotland currently living with MND have been invaluable to not just my family, but to many, many families. So let's make no mistake about it, those living with motor neuron disease don't have long, so we don't have long. It's a race against time that until this moment, the race has only ever had one outcome. The average life expectancy after diagnosis is 14 months. 14 months. That's all. 14 months. In real terms, that is nothing. That's just mere hours with our loved ones, just brief moments with friends. And some might say in Scotland and the United Kingdom, the equivalent of at least three general elections. I'm just trying to bring a bit of lightness into that, but that shows you how short a time that people have. Every moment, presiding officer, of that time is utterly precious. Every moment is accounted for. And whilst we celebrate in the time that we have left, we must, must also make the reality better for those who must go through that MND journey. And that MND journey has just been made a little bit easier. In partnership with ScotRail, literal journey I'm talking about here, MND Scotland have only yesterday announced a journey to a cure, a pledge from ScotRail to increase the accessibility of their trains for passengers living with motor neuron disease and many other conditions. But we must also realise that MND isn't just a neurological condition. Where possible, 
it is incumbent on us to make that journey just a little bit more comfortable for those with motor neuron disease and those who care for them. Which is why I'm reiterating my call today for the Scottish Government to let's get benefits right for MND patients. Let's grant lifetime welfare awards for those living with lifelong terminal illness because that life is quite short. Time is precious. For those 14 months from diagnosis, time is running out. It's a countdown. The clock is ticking. MND patients shouldn't be at the behest of a DWP official. They shouldn't have to rely on the mercy of an individual in the welfare system. So let us all together ensure that those precious moments that they have left on this earth is spent with happiness and with dignity, not destitution and worry over their welfare. My relationship with motor neuron disease is well told and well versed in this chamber and wider and I make no apologies for it. Ten years I have been raising this issue in this chamber and in those ten years I have seen good advances. For me, since the age of nine, it was an all too familiar disease in my family. And I suppose now at the age of 21, I understand that, <laughs> maybe a bit older than 21, but have become much more averse in how it affects other people's families too. So what do we do, presiding officer? We honour those people. We honour my dad. We honour my friend Owen McGee. We honour others' friends and our friend Gordon Aikman. Ewan MacDonald, Jimmy Johnson, and my family sends heartfelt um, wishes to the family of Doddy Weir, and we honour him today and his brave decision to come out and tell us yesterday of his uh, trials with motor neuron disease. How do we honour them? With debates like these, with the reception that you will be also welcome to tonight, with skydiving, with fire walking, with zip sliding and every other thing that Motor Neuron Disease Scotland seems to be able to get us all to do. Our monthly charitable donations and contributions to research and development and support. All of these matter. All of that help matters. And when our friends and their families lose our, their voices to motor neuron disease, we honour them by raising our voices in this chamber, out with this chamber and any opportunity that we have we raise our voices higher in seeking better systems, in seeking support for that research, in maintaining hope. Yes, hope for some people when all hope is gone. It's up to us to pick that up and run with it. So, presiding officer, if we can do that together in this chamber, across this land, and across this world and global awareness day, together we can cure MND. Thank you. I call Kezia Dugdale to be followed by Claire Hockey. Ms Dugdale, please. Thank you very much, President Officer. And can I start uh, by asking members to take a look at my register of interest where it says that I uh, give all my external uh, earnings to Motor Neuron Disease Scotland. And thank uh, Christina McKelvey very much indeed for hosting today's debate. As she mentioned in her speech, she's got a long-standing passionate interest in this disease and a long-standing commitment to finding a cure for it. She also, in her speech, referenced the news that we heard today about Doddy Weir, that great uh, Scotland giant of the rugby field who now faces his own MND diagnosis. And she also mentioned that this is not the first sports star that we've heard of who's uh, got this condition. If you think of Fernando Rickson, Jimmy Johnston, Jus van der Vesthazen, the South African rugby player that used to torment Scotland on the rugby field. Even Lou Gehrig, who was an American baseball player in the 1920s, had the disease. And for many years in America, uh, MND or ALS was called Lou Gehrig disease in his memory. There's undoubtedly a link between MND and sport. At least we think there is. We don't know because we don't really know enough about MND and why people get it. That's why we've got to do more research to find out about this disease and indeed find a cure. We think there's a link between head and neck injuries in people who get MND. Again, we don't know, which is why we need more research money. We think that 5 to 10% of people that get MND get it genetically. 90% of people get it through environmental factors. Again, we don't know. My dear friend Gordon Aikman was an international gymnast for Scotland. Again, he could be one of those sports stars who got it because of uh, his history of competitive sport. We don't know and he'll never know why he got that. The last time I saw him was at the Ewan Macdonald Centre, uh, visiting much of the work I know that Christina McKelvey's seen uh, over the years. 
It was, in fact, the, the last time I saw him was when we were both showing some fantastic new research that Edinburgh University had done uh, using zebrafish, the tiny, tiny little fish uh, which of themselves can grow motor, motor neuron cells, cells which regenerate themselves to uh, affect your muscle tissue, to help you speak, to do everything else. And experts at Edinburgh University now think that they can produce drugs which will help these zebrafish uh, multiply these cells in their body. And once they've cracked that, they can take that technology and use it in humans and perhaps get humans to regenerate their own motor neuron cells and that in itself could lead to finding a cure for it. It was truly, truly inspirational to see that work and it's global and world leading in its potential. But again, it's poorly funded. There are three countries in the world that could find a cure to motor neuron disease, Canada, Israel and Scotland. Wouldn't it be fantastic if it was Scotland that set a national ambition to be the country that found the cure to motor neuron disease? I would appeal to the Scottish Government to perhaps take on that idea. Uh, I left that centre uh, kissing good, uh, Gordon goodbye. I said I would see him later and then I never did. So forever uh, we debate the issue of motor neuron disease in this chamber, I will speak in his memory and some of the things I hope that he would want us to talk about. Christina McKelvey touched on this, but we can't ignore the fact today is the day of the Queen's speech. And that Queen's speech will contain uh, further cuts to the social security system that we collectively built as a nation. One of the things that the Tories will cut is the motability scheme. This is something Gordon had. He got a car, a, a Jeep car, a high car, so that he could climb into it without having to move his legs too much. The car was adapted so he could use the gear stick. It had additional sensors that uh, acted faster for him whenever there was a danger so he could respond in tight. That car gave him the freedom and independence he needed for three months when he was still able to drive. I'm not sure he would get that today under the Tories, and I sincerely regret that. The reality is, though, that we do now have powers in this place over PIP, DLA, attendance allowance, carers allowance. We have the power here to guarantee automatic entitlement to benefits. And like Christina McKelvey, I very much hope the Scottish Parliament will grab that opportunity and run with it. It is MND Global Awareness Day. We have to remind ourselves why we have to keep explaining what MND is and keep telling its story. Christina McKelvey made the point. It's because so many people who get MND die so quickly. It's not like commercially viable enough to spend money researching this disease because people die too quickly to get the drugs they need to cure it. That's why each and every one of us that's been affected by MND needs to use that experience to speak up for this disease and aspire to find a cure here in Scotland. Thank you. Thank you very much. Claire Hawkey to be followed by Donald Cameron. Ms Hawkey, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I thank Christina McKelvey for bringing this debate, allowing us the opportunity to recognise the important and inspiring work being done by MND Scotland. There can be no doubt that Gordon Aikman's brave and very public battle with this progressive condition, whilst at the same time raising over £600,000 for MND research, has raised both public and political awareness of motor neuron disease and the profound effect the condition has on both patients and their families. Gordon was full of praise for his specialist nurses and carers and through his Gordon's Fight Back campaign was successful in securing his primary objective of getting the agreement of the Scottish Government to double the, the number of MND specialist nurses in Scotland. They are now also paid by the NHS and this allows charitable donations through which MND nurses were previously paid to be channelled into better support, care and research for a cure. We can only imagine how devastating an MND diagnosis is for the individual receiving it. <coughs> Learning about how the condition progressively impacts all physical functions will be terrifying. And coming to terms with the fact that the loss of mobility and indeed the inability to move at all is unimaginable. Understanding that intimate personal care will be required, the fear that the time will come when communication may come down to electronic aids, signals, or even just the blink of an eye. The understanding that intensive support and loss of independence is inevitable. And then there is the realization of the impact this will have on your family and friends who have to witness it all. And the absolute knowledge that you cannot do anything to stop this progressive disease. This diagnosis has an enormous impact on the lives and well-being of the patient's family and loved ones. And there is no certainty about the future where patients experience the progression of the disease differently and at different rates of acceleration. 24-hour care is always going to be inevitable and the financial implications of loss of earnings brings added stress to already unimaginable suffering. 
Facing into a future of no certainty means that psychological and emotional support are essential for both patient and their loved ones. Importantly for those affected, MND Scotland offer counselling services and complementary therapies for patients and their families. And in addition to the excellent care given by NHS healthcare professionals, MND Scotland also provide a wide range of other supports for both patients and their families to help them to cope, not only just with the physical aspects of the condition, with things like equipment, loans, services, but also with practical aspects such as welfare and benefits. Whilst good progress has been made on several of the objectives promoted by Gordon's Fight Back campaign, work is still required in other areas, and one of these is on fast tracking of benefits. It's simply not acceptable that people with terminal diagnosis such as MND should have to wait long periods of time before receiving the DWP benefit awards that they are due and urgently require. And I therefore welcome the work being done on behalf of the Scottish Government by the Disability and Carer Benefits Expert Advisory Group to look at automatic and lifetime awards for those with terminal conditions. With our new powers over Social Security, the Scottish Government want to stop the revolving door of assessments and the related stress and anxiety that brings for those with long-term illnesses, disabilities or conditions. And in building a new so Scottish social security system based on dignity and respect, the government is committed to introducing long-term awards. Presiding officer, MND is an illness that currently has no cure, as we have heard, and research is vital, both to help find a cure, but also to improve the lives of those living with MND. On this Global MND Awareness Day, it is right for us to commend the work of MND Scotland in this area. And this week they have announced a further £583,000 of MND Scotland funded research into this devastating illness. And it's right too that members across this chamber should support the efforts of MND Scotland to increase research investment across the UK, to bring more clinical trials to Scotland and to ensure that as a society we strive to bring a sensitive and dignified support system for those living and coping with motor neuron disease. Thank you. I call Donald Cameron to be followed by Monica Lennon. Mr Cameron, please. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'm delighted to have the opportunity to contribute to this debate. And I'd like others like to thank Christina McKelvey for bringing it to the Chamber today. Although we debated issues around motor neuron disease back in February when the Parliament commemorated the life and achievements of Gordon Aikman, it is important, crucially important, to keep matters such as this in the public domain. Pressure and momentum must be maintained. And I'd like to commend the will of parliamentarians across this chamber in keeping motor neuron disease to the fore. This debate is particularly poignant after we learned in the news yesterday that one of Scotland's rugby legends, Doddy Weir, announced that he has been diagnosed with MND. Doddy Weir was one of my childhood heroes. Many rugby fans and others will remember his athletic prowess as he towered above others in the line out, and he was a true talisman in the Scottish rugby teams of the mid 90s. This will understandably be an extremely hard time for his family and friends, but we can all be heartened by his commitment to spend as much time as possible supporting research of the condition through his support of the Ewan MacDonald Centre, already mentioned by others, and raising awareness and funds. As Claire Hockey mentioned, the diagnosis of a condition like this must feel like a devastating hammer blow. But to have the ability to see light at the end of the tunnel and go out and make the best of the situation is truly incredible. And what's especially inspiring about Doddy Weir is that he revealed his diagnosis yesterday in order to mark Global MND Awareness Day and to raise public awareness. As the motion states, today is that day, and I'd like to commend the Scottish Government for their establishment of the Gordon Aikman Scholarship, which the Cabinet Secretary announced back in February. As she said at the time, the scholarship will fund professionals or individuals with knowledge of MND to take forward research into new and better ways of caring for people with a condition. I think I'm right in saying that uh, MND Scotland have matched that funding, uh, which is a, a wonderful and welcome news. Um, in my view, supporting research is one of the most important ways that we can do this, with the short-term aim of extending life expectancy of those with MND, and with that, allowing people greater personal freedom and dignity. Investment in research will crucially assist in the long-term aim of finding a cure. And with all that in mind, I too would like to commend MND Scotland on their focus of research and welcome the news they're committing a further 583,000 into research projects, which will look at a number of things, look at protecting motor neurons, investigating issues around apathy in MND, 
links between metabolism and MND, and how gene mutations react with proteins, which help protect motor neurons. And I'm particularly intrigued about the research into apathy, because even those who've taken on the Herculean project of supporting MND research whilst living with the condition will have days when they are too mentally and physically fatigued to do anything at all and lack motivation. And the aim of this research is to, ass is to assess the real-life impact of specific types of apathy on people living with MND and their families through the course of their illness. And as MND Scotland say, it's an area which hasn't yet been explored to any great extent and demotivational problems are rarely assessed in clinical practice. And hopefully such research will help guide intervention and management of symptoms and improve the lives and the care of people living with MND as well as their families. Now that's just one snapshot, Deputy Presiding Officer, of the important work going into MND research. I know other members will go into detail into other areas, but it's so important that we in this chamber continue to talk about MND and the work of the many charities and individuals involved in research, involved in fundraising, involved in raising awareness. So can I once again, like others, commend the efforts of organisations like MND Scotland who work day in, day out to improve the lives of those living with MND and to find treatments so that eventually this condition can be cured. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Cameron. I call Monica Lennon to be followed by Brian Whittle. Ms. Lennon, Thank you, please. Presiding Officer. I'd like to begin by giving heartfelt thanks to Christina McKelvey for bringing this important issue to the Chamber today and for all her tireless campaigning over many years. Motor neuron disease is an illness which has a devastating and sudden impact on the lives of those who are diagnosed with it and the lives of those who love them. Being diagnosed with MND with its cause unknown and still with no cure at this time is a truly life-altering event. Both the uncertainty of the illness, its pace and the different way it impacts different individuals, in addition to the finality of the diagnosis, all, con all contribute to what makes it so difficult to cope with. The all too quick deterioration from being able-bodied and healthy to succumbing to MND and then being unable to walk or even speak is a cruel and difficult experience for anyone to have to come to terms with. Gordon Aikman, of course, whose name we are all familiar with, was so incredibly brave in the final years of his life following his diagnosis with MND. His relentless pursuit of a cure and a fundraising which has resulted from his efforts are a fitting legacy and a testament to his character. I'd also like to con congratulate MND Scotland for their tireless campaigning work and add my good wishes to all who are looking forward to the reception hosted by MND Scotland here in Parliament this evening. I'd like to use the rest of my time in this debate today to talk about someone I know with MND, a constituent of mine whose families have known each other for many years and that I've had the fortune of being reacquainted with over the last few months for perhaps the most unfortunate of reasons. Frank Lyons, who lives in Hamilton in South Lanarkshire, was diagnosed with MND in September 2014, just months after Frank himself took part in the famous ice bucket challenge to raise awareness of the condition. He started experiencing difficulty swallowing and sooner, soon after began to find difficulty with his speech. He was living in Australia at the time where he'd lived and worked with his wife Ray since 2007. When he first went to a doctor, Frank was initially told he'd had a, a minor stroke and Ray thought that perhaps it was MS or Parkinson's. It was almost another year before Frank received a formal diagnosis of MND, just before he was due to return to Scotland for a family wedding. He puts the length of time between his symptoms first appearing and a formal diagnosis down to the fact that MND appeared to be less well known about in Australia. Navigating the nuances of a foreign healthcare system was another barrier at first to the Lyons family, confused by the difference between public and private healthcare and unsure about where to go to or who to ask for help. Frank's wife said that their private healthcare often felt like paying more for no extra care or service. At first, they had different people coming to their home and there was no consistency or continuity of care. So it made a difficult situation all the more challenging to cope with. Being diagnosed with a life-limiting condition in a foreign country with few friends or family to support them, the very least that Frank was needing was someone in his healthcare team who could oversee his care. 
Once they had a permanent point of contact who did come once a month, things did get better. The experience of the Lions family underlines just how important specialist MD support is, no matter where you are in the world. That continuity of care brings a certain level of, of peace of mind, knowing there is one specialist point of contact who can direct specialist care. Gordon's success in, in doubling MND nurses in Scotland and paying them from the public push simply can't be praised enough. The difference this will make to people like Frank across the country and in the years to come is simply immeasurable. Frank, who has returned to Scotland and is living in Hamilton, has been attending the Kilbride Hospice, which serves South Lanarkshire, as a day patient over the last year. Much like Gordon, MND hasn't slowed Frank down. Although he's lost the use of his voice, he's been campaigning hard to expand the inpatient provision at the hospice, sending countless emails and getting the backing of the local paper, the East Kilbride News, to back his campaign. Because the work at the Kilbride Hospice of the staff there um, has given Frank and, and Ray a better understanding of the condition and he is certain that Kilbride is where he wants to stay towards the end of his illness, should he require that inpatient care. Frank is an, in an inspiration, and it's my continued hope that he'll be successful in his wish to be able to remain at Kilbride Hospice at the end of his illness. To close, for us here in the Scottish Parliament, doing all we can to support the work of camp campaigners like Frank, and MND Scotland to improve the lives of those with this condition, including making sure they receive automatic entitlement and lifetime awards of benefits, and looking again at the provision of free social care for all who need it has to be the priority. Thank you very much. I call Brian Whittle, who will be the last speaker in the open debate. Mr Whittle, please. Um, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Uh, and I'd like to thank Christine McKelvey for bringing this motion to the Chamber. Why are we here today? I've always felt that members' debates often present Holyrood at its best. This chamber gives us a powerful platform to speak not only for ourselves, but for others. Today's debate will be watched online. Our speeches will be entered into public record, and journalists perhaps will report what is said through social media. All these things help to spread knowledge and awareness of the important issues, which shouldn't be obscured by the fog of party politics. Scotland is arguably, arguably more aware of the realities of motor neuron disease than most. That's thanks in no small part to the work of Gordon Aikman, and I'm sure my colleagues across the chamber will agree that one of the most important legacies of his campaign, Gordon's fight back, is the greater awareness of MND, not only among parliamentarians, but the public at large. The desire to spread awareness about MND that Gordon embedded continues today. Sorry. He's going to call me such a big Jesse. Yesterday, my friend... The last um, thing you are, Mr Whittle, is that. Yesterday, my friend, uh, the former Lions in Scotland Rugby International, Doddy Weir, announced that he had motor neuron disease. No, I am. He's going to call me a big Jesse. No, no, he's going to call me a small Jesse. Because he's the only man that could get away with calling me wee man. Uh, I was actually supposed to be playing golf with him this weekend. And he does play golf like a giraffe going for a drink. <laughs> but uh, the, um, it does highlight the indiscriminate nature of this horrible disease. And his decision to speak out and commit to raising awareness about the condition is admirable, and I intend to help him do that in any way I can. MND sufferers like Doddy and Gordon, who choose to speak out about their condition, give us an incredible insight into the world of the MND patient. Deputy Presiding Officer, they say that a problem shared is a problem halved. It must surely follow that the more widely a problem is shared, the more manageable that problem becomes. Events like Motor Neuron Disease Global Awareness Day are vital if we are to address the kinds of complex problems involved in tackling diseases like MND, both in how we support patients now and how we work to find the cure. I welcome the Scottish Government's creation of the Gordon Aikman Scholarship as part of the efforts in this country to make life easier for MND patients. Indeed, I hope that if the scholarship proves successful in generating innovative new ways to improve care of MND patients, we might see similar initiatives that being supported for other life-changing conditions such as Huntington's or MS or dementia. In addition to improving our understanding, today gives us an opportunity to recognise the work already being done across Scotland and the world to help people with MND. To MND nurses, researchers and campaigners, thank you. 
Perhaps the biggest thanks should go to the thousands of people across Scotland who got out of their way to raise funds for causes like MND in Scotland. Their willingness to run marathons and pour freezing water over their heads or do anything else that, to raise funds should never be underestimated and never be taken for granted. To each and every one of you, we say thank you. Most of these people will go through life never meeting anyone with MND, but that hasn't stopped them. Those people don't need to know someone with MND to know its effects to those with, with the disease. They don't need to have someone in their family with MND to understand the heartache of watching a loved one's body slowly fail, even if their mind remains strong. They didn't need these things because they had awareness, and they have the awareness thanks to the work of MND Scotland, Gordon Aikman, and others who have chosen to speak out about their battles with MND. One of the oldest, ax oldest axioms in politics is that knowledge is power. But that isn't just true of politics. And the more of us who have knowledge of the conditions like MND, the more power we have to do something about it. That's why today is so important. That's why the work of MND Scotland is so important. And that's why Gordon Aikman's campaign makes such a difference. By sharing their knowledge of MND with us, they're giving us the power to change things. And I began today by asking why we're here today. We are here to change things. And it's only by, by about talking about MND and conditions like it that we can change things for the better. Winston Churchill said, if you have an important point to make, don't try to be subtle or clever. Use a pile driver, hit, it, hit the point once, then come back and hit it again, and then hit it a third time, a tremendous whack. Deputy Presiding Officer, I intend to keep hammering away until things get better, and I hope colleagues across this chamber will do the same. Thank you. I call the Minister to close the Government. Seven minutes there thereabout, Ms Watt. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer, and I'm very pleased to be able to respond on behalf of the Government this afternoon as we mark MND Awareness Week and Global MND Awareness Day. And I thank Christina McKelvey for moving the motion and securing this important debate. Since entering Parliament in 2007, Christina has tirelessly championed MND awareness as a result of her own father succumbing to the disease. And in the contributions we've heard from across the parties, there have been very powerful and personal stories on how MND touches the lives of many, many families across the country. And as Brian Whittle mentioned just yesterday, his friend Dodie Weir uh, revealing that he had been diagnosed with MND. And I'm sure we all have our thoughts and prayers with him and his family. So many members in this chamber are knowledgeable about MND that we must, I think, be able to crack it as, uh, as Kezia has, oh, as, has so clearly said that we should be able to do. And it's clear for, from the remarks of so many members uh, how much of an inspiration the late Gordon Aikman was and the impact his work with MND Scotland has had in transforming care for people living with the condition. As others have said, the campaign, his campaign raised in excess of £600,000 for MND Scotland. That's an exceptional sum invested in research that is aimed at finding a cure for MND. This government is proud to have worked with Gordon and MND Scotland on the hugely successful campaign. And we're honoured to have played our part in helping to achieve some of the goals that he set, not for his own sake, but to make life better for, the, for others. We've invested an extra 2.5 million annually in the Specialist Nurse and Care Fund. As Claire Hockey said, this has more than doubled the number of MND specialist nurses across the country and ensured that all of them are now funded by the NHS. Rachel Hamilton. The event intervention. Um, Monica Lennon made an important point there about specialist nursing care. Um, the Borders Health Board um, access MND nurses from NHS Lothian and there are 14 MND patients in the Borders Health Board area just now. The Borders numbers are added to the Lothians to give the nurses that work in this area a ratio of 1.36 uh, pa patients. And I just wondered if uh, the Minister would be able to tell us if there are any plans to lower this ratio to ensure that patients with MND do receive the best possible care. Minister. Well, um, all, uh, each, each and every health board um, will um, have the specialists in relation to uh, what numbers we are. And if we can, you know, make sure that we have a bigger body of nurses um, and cross-border 
Health Board working um, can, can achieve that, um, then that's important. But on the specific issue, I'll try and find out if um, there's any uh, uh, plans to, to, to reduce the ratio and if indeed it, it's necessary. Um, so we have, as I said, doubled the number of MND specialist nurses across the country and ensured that they're all funded uh, by the NHS. We've legislated to give a statutory right to communication equipment and support to give a voice to people who do not have a voice or are at risk of losing their own. And we're also paying a real living wage to social care workers, which is, was another key aspect of the campaign. We've provided local authorities with £6 million in 2016-17 to increase the thresholds at which people start to pay for their care. And working with COSLA, we have already ensured that no one in the last six months of a terminal illness pays for the care they receive at home. And as we've set out in both our manifesto and our programme for government, we're carrying out a feasibility study on extending free personal care to people under 65, regardless of their medical conditions. The findings of this study uh, will uh, be given to ministers, I think, at the end of the summer. And significantly, we're investing in MND research, which we all know was hugely important to Gordon. Over the next three years, there will be six new funded MND dedicated PhD posts in our universities as a result of Gordon's campaign. And Kezia and others will want to know that we're working with the Chief, Scientific, Science, Chief Scientist's Office to hold an MND research symposium later this year, bringing together experts committed to finding a cure. Members may also recall that during the debate following Gordon's passing in February, the Cabinet Secretary for Health and Sport announced we would create the Gordon Aikman Scholarship Programme. This programme will com commemorate Gordon's contribution to improving the provision of specialist care and research for those with MND. And I'm pleased to confirm today that the scholarship, a joint partnership with MND Scotland, is now open for applications. Furthermore, thanks to MND Scotland matching Scottish Government funding of 25,000, the scholarship will be doubled to 50,000. The fund will support individuals and professionals to develop, implement and evaluate practical interventions to improve the quality of life for people who are affected by the condition. The scholarships will continue to drive forward the improvements to MND care that Gordon had kick-started in Scotland and will be a fitting tribute to a truly inspirational person. The scholarship scheme will be administered by the Nursing, Midwifery and Allied Health Professionals Research Unit at the University of Stirling. I'm especially committed to learning from those affected by MND and a, specific, a significant amount of the funding will be invested in funding a project led by those with MND themselves or their carers. I want to make sure that the momentum that Gordon created and the good work that followed continues to be taken forward. Uh, Christina McKelvey mentioned social security and I would like to underline our commitment that when the powers for disability benefits transfer to this parliament, a fast track system will be in place for those who are terminally ill so that payments can get to those uh, people affected as soon as possible. In building our own social security system in Scotland, we've committed to a rights-based approach and will exemplify the founding principles of dignity, fairness and respect. We will do so from the ground up, basing our policy, design and delivery decisions on the lived experience of those currently using the UK benefit system, those with expertise in providing advice and support and those with experience in delivery. And the recruitment of over 2,000 volunteers to our experience panels will help us design and test our communication channels, our application processes, our appeals framework, our decision making, our assessment process and our IT systems. We have agreed on ongoing engagement with MND Scotland to ensure they are involved in the development of our disability benefits policy on eligibility and assessment particularly in relation to award duration and automatic entitlement. 
Presiding officer, I'd like to close this debate by paying tribute to the work of MND Scotland and indeed the tireless efforts of the late Gordon Aitman. I give my commitment that we will continue to work with MND Scotland and others to ensure that Gordon's legacy of lasting practical involve, improvement in the lives of people with MND is delivered. Thank you very much. Thank you. And can I thank members for their very personal and heartfelt contributions. As Mr Whittle said, it does show Parliament in a different light to the public. And I thank you all for your contributions. I close this meeting and suspend till two o'clock.